In the next seven minutes or so, we'll look back at a week that saw the COP27 climate summit get underway in Egypt, Spider Boy Gavin Williamson stepping down, Russia announcing a withdrawal from the Ukrainian city of Kherson, and high drama as US elections came down to the wire. This is the Standout 7 from the Smart 7. Don't you forget to hit that follow button to get your daily updates at 7 a.m. Please. The UN Climate Summit COP27 kicked off in Egypt with a dramatic opening address from Antonio Guterres and we'll see two weeks of negotiations between countries on climate action. The UN Secretary General, who's famous for not mincing his words, began by giving a stark warning for the future of our planet. We are in the fight of our lives and we are losing. We are on a highway to climate hell with our foot still on the accelerator. It comes as the UN warns the planet's already warmed 1.1 degrees since pre-industrial times and scientists say rises must be limited to 1.5 degrees to avoid the worst effects. But experts say we're on track for a rise as high as 2.8 degrees Celsius this century if we carry on with current policies. Rishi Sunak did eventually turn up and emphasise the importance of delivering on existing promises from Glasgow's COP26. We can turn our struggle against climate change into a global mission for new jobs and clean growth. Meanwhile, Boris Johnson was offered a fringe event taking a swipe at the Tory party for their stance on fracking, after including his successor Liz Truss, who had planned to lift the ban in England. The former Prime Minister attacked net zero naysayers. But there are people who've drawn the conclusion that the whole project of net zero needs to be delayed and, you know, for instance, we need to reopen coal-fired power stations and frack the hell out of the, the British countryside. So I believe here at Charm is a moment when we really have to tackle this nonsense head on. He seemed to be unsackable, although he's now had to resign three times. He's Sir Gavin Williamson. And on Tuesday night, following fresh complaints of bullying, he finally stepped down. He says he's intent on clearing his name and complying fully with the complaints process. The final straw appeared to be when former Deputy Chief Whip Anne Milton reported new incidents of Williamson's behaviour while Chief Whip in an interview with Channel 4 on Tuesday evening. She told of a time that an MP who was in financial difficulty was due to be given a cheque. But I do remember him asking me to give the MP in question the cheque and he waved it under my nose and said make sure when you give him this cheque, he knows that I now own him. Labour shadow leader of the House of Commons, Thangham Debonair, says none of this reflects well on the new Prime Minister. Well, it's right that he's resigned, but I'm afraid it doesn't end here because this is just another example of Rishi Sunak's weak leadership and poor judgment. The fallout from the bullying allegations continued on Wednesday with the Lib Dem saying Williamson should be stripped of his knighthood as well if the complaints against him are true. Labour leader Sakir Starmer took his moment at Prime Minister's questions to probe Rishi Sunak on appointing him as a cabinet minister. He also wasn't going to let Rishi forget about Gavin's totally normal pet, a tarantula named Cronus that he's famously kept in his office at Parliament. Mr Speaker, if he can't even stand up to a cartoon bully with a pet spider, if he's too scared to face the public in an election, what chance has he got of running the country? To be fair, Rishi Sunak seemed to acknowledge his mistake in appointing him, though presumably that's nothing to do with the spider. Mr Speaker, I obviously regret appointing someone who has had to resign in these circumstances. But I think think what the British people would like to know is that when situations like this arise, that they will be dealt with properly. Wednesday saw a long day of vote counting as America's midterm elections wrapped up. The final result will be far closer than Republican-leaning polls had suggested, with no sign of the promised red wave, as the Democrats fought an impressive battle across key states. There are still counts going on in House and Senate races, and it looks like Republicans will flip the House with a narrow majority, while the Georgia Senate race between Herschel Walker and Senator Raphael Warnock will go to a runoff in December. Lawrence O'Donnell from MSNBC was positive about the outcome for the Democrats. Joe Biden is on the ver- of being the most successful Democratic president 
in a midterm right. election that we have seen in quite some time. Oh. The former guy, Donald Trump, dismissed claims he was annoyed by the results, which saw several of his nominees, including Dr. Oz, lose. But he had a strategy all worked out to avoid any responsibility. Well, I think if they win, I should get all the credit. And if they lose, I should not be blamed at all. OK, but it'll probably be just the opposite. Joe Biden addressed the nation late on Wednesday, hailed a good day for democracy and praised the efforts of Democrats while promising to work with Republicans to get America moving. I'm prepared to work with my Republican colleagues. The American people have made clear, I think, that they expect Republicans to be prepared to work with me as well. Ukraine's president has urged his troops to be cautious about Russian orders to withdraw from the southern city of Kherson. Vladimir Zelensky is sceptical about the Kremlin's plans, although in a call with Rishi Sunak, he agreed it was a sign of progress. Moscow's occupied the region since March, and NATO Secretary Jen Stoltenberg says Russia can't be underestimated. Uh, we have to wait and see uh, uh, what actually is going to happen, that Russia has absolutely lost the momentum. Ukrainian troops are moving at speed towards the city of Kherson, with reports of dozens of villages and settlements liberated in the last few days. And Andriy Zagorodnyuk, the country's former defence minister, told Times Radio Russia still has a strong military presence in Kherson. We've been preparing for some time, uh, and uh, yes, uh, but uh, again, we're not expecting this to be uh, uh, an easy uh, operation. Still to come on the standout seven rumbles in the jungle as Matt Hancock joins I'm a Celeb and tributes to a British acting legend. Right after this. Welcome back. The threats of strike action kept coming on Thursday as 100,000 civil servants voted to walk out in a row over pay, pensions and jobs. More rail disruptions also on the way after train drivers in England announced they'll be taking action on the last Saturday of the month. Meanwhile, the health secretary says he's had constructive talks with a nursing union after its members voted to go on strike. It follows reports some nurses are resorting to food banks or eating patients' leftovers because they can't afford meals. Patricia Marquis from the Royal College of Nursing told BBC Breakfast it just can't carry on. What they're saying to the government is enough is enough. It's years of underfunding into the NHS and years of underfunding into nursing and the value of their salaries has just fallen behind over the last 10 years. Speaking to Sky News, NHS providers Saffron Cordry says she has every sympathy with nurses. The conditions that have led nurses to this action, we we completely understand how strongly they feel. Cabinet Minister Chris Heaton Harris wants to see further talks between the government and the nursing union but says pay increases must be set in the context of the wider national situation for the economy. Uh, nurses did get a 3% pay rise last year when the whole of the rest of the public sector got uh, did not get anything. There's an independent um, pay board behind uh, nurses pay in the United Kingdom. Uh, we've agreed to their recommendations. It was the moment we've all been waiting for. Matt Hancock made his long-awaited entrance into the jungle. His decision to join the show seen him lose the Tory whip and widespread criticism from the families of those who died during the COVID pandemic. Deputy Labour leader Angela Rayner wasn't too impressed. They just want to see him eat a, you know, a kangaroo's anus. They're not interested (laughs) in the issues. And fellow new camp mate Sean Walsh clearly hadn't been tipped off as to who his celebrity buddy was going to be. Matt Hancock. Matt Hancock. Leslie Phillips, who was perhaps best known to younger generations as the voice of the sorting hat in the Harry Potter franchise, has died at the ripe old age of 98. The veteran actor's agent says he passed away peacefully in his sleep on Monday. His career spanned eight decades and he was also known for some pretty suggestive catchphrases in the Carry On films, including, right, say... Are you, are you ready? Yes. 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 Hello. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. And really. the other one? Yeah, I got stuck in the tube once doing that. <laughs> I had the whole tube train <laughs> getting me to do all my catchphrases. It was incredible, really. This has been the Standout 7, the best of the week from the Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow, 7 a.m. with the Sunday 7. Have a great rest of your weekend. Written, produced and published by Daft Dogs.